Okay, so we've had a maiden and a subsequent test flight of the Volantex Ranger. And uh, although I love the build quality, I like the design and everything, it's almost unflyable the way it's set up. Uh, it has some serious problems in the air. Number one problem is the high mounted motor is pushing the plane over when you apply power. Now you counteract that by angling the motor up a little bit further and this just isn't angled up far enough. That's an easy fix, I just need to uh, put some washers in the bottom couple of uh, mounting screws which will lift the bottom of the motor up and should counteract that tendency to uh, dive under power. Um, it's so bad that uh, you put full power and you'll end up heading for the ground, take the power off and the plane loops up and wants to do a backflip. So that makes it really hard to stay uh, level flight. The other big problem is it has terrible adverse yaw. Uh, and that means that um, when you turn, you bank the plane and you want the plane to just sort of turn around into the bank. With adverse yaw, the plane banks and it goes the opposite direction. And you have to fight it with plenty of rudder and elevator to get the plane to turn in the direction you want. Now that often happens with this sort of uh, layout of a plane with the high mounted wing, uh, a flat wing, a little bit of dihedral would probably help that. Um, and also the big fuselage getting in the way of the rudder makes the rudder ineffective or the, or the uh, vertical stabiliser at least. So it really needs a bigger vertical stabiliser. You can also overcome that by uh, introducing some differential into the aileron so that they go up more than they go down. Uh, but uh, it comes with a, a non-programmable radio so you can't really do that and I'll, I want to get it flying with the provided radio. You can introduce a mechanical differential by angling the servo horn uh, a little bit, what is it, forward and lengthening the, the push rod uh, and just by virtue of the position that the horn is in when it's going down, it gives less down deflection and a little bit more up deflection. So that should help a little bit. Another thing I'm going to try is uh, mechanically mixing the rudder and the ailerons. Now you can do that easily in a computer radio, but we don't have one. Well we do have one, but not, not with this plane. So what I'm going to do is plug the aileron servo sorry, plug the rudder servo into the aileron channel. And that means that the rudder and the ailerons are always working together. The problem is, with that set up, the rudder is working in the wrong direction. So what I can do to get around that is take the rudder servo and flip it over. I'll have to cut out a little bit of foam here to fit it back in. Flip it over, reattach the uh, push rod plug the rudder into the aileron channel, so you've got both ailerons plus the rudder going into the aileron channel, and that will mechanically mix the rudder and the ailerons together, which should help with the turns. All right, let's get onto that and see how it works. So I've taken the motor off and I'm using ID card plastic to make up a couple of packing shims to uh, make the motor have more down angle. It's just glued into place. And I think I might even try a third shim, just to give it a little bit more angle. And yeah, just reattaching the motor. And you can see the increased down thrust. Now I'm removing the uh, rudder servo, and I'll cut out that little pocket there. A um, bit of surgery. Flip the servo over and glue it back into position. I wouldn't need to do this if I was going to use a programmable radio but I thought I'd work with what I had um, or what, what came with the kit which is a non-programmable radio and uh, this does the job. Reattaching the rudder and that now works as a permanent mix. I keep saying mechanical mix, what I mean is permanent mix. Another thing adding to the adverse yaw, I think, is the fact that these uh, holes are a good 9 or 10 millimetres behind the hinge line, which is up there. So that would add to uh, 
the reverse differential, um, which would increase the adverse yaw. So to solve that, we would need to move the um, control horns further forward. That's flying properly now. Oh, that's awesome. Turns beautifully. <laughs> Flies level. So that is now flying beautifully. It's got much less of the porpoise in, um, of course we've angled up the motor a little bit further. There's smoke on the lens there I think. Um, it's turning really nicely now because I've got the rudder and the aileron working together all the time. I have um, I've got the ailerons on the outer hole uh, on the control horn so we're getting less ailerons and more rudder still has a little bit of the dip in the power up uh, so the motor could do with a little bit more um, down angle but otherwise it's, uh, it's vastly improved let's have another go <laughs> what a difference.